In this lesson, we're going to talk about the important chemistry of the coenzyme, coenzyme A, which is shown here. You might not have realized coenzyme A is so large of a molecule because we often abbreviate it like this. It looks a lot smaller when it's written out as these five letters. So here, we're abbreviating everything from here on as this CoA. And we just show the HS because that's really where the important chemistry happens with this molecule linking up with other molecules. But coenzyme A is actually made up of this cystamine, bonded in an amide linkage to beta alanine, linked up in another amide to pantoic acid, then to a diphosphate, and finally to this 3-phosphoadenosine piece over here. When coenzyme A covalently bonds to a molecule via this sulfur, it makes a thioester bond. So we need to discuss why thioesters are important in biochemistry. So here's our coenzyme A ester. This sulfur adjacent to a carbonyl is the thioester. And we can get at why this is important if we compare it to a carboxylic acid. So if this molecule underwent hydrolysis and a molecule of water cleaved right here at the carbonyl, we would get acetic acid. So here's the structure of acetic acid. Now if we put this into the environment of the body, assuming this is at blood pH, which is 7.4, this molecule becomes ionized. Acetic acid has a pKa of 4.6, so at pH 7.4, where we're above the pKa, more basic than the pKa of this molecule, it loses a proton and becomes this anion. Now say, for example, we wanted this carboxylate, the ionized carboxylic acid, to react with a nucleophile. Well, that's going to be pretty tough. Now, our nucleophile may have a formal negative charge, as I've shown here. But regardless, it's going to have lone pairs of electrons, which are negative, and it's going to want to attack here and push these electrons up. Well, that's putting a whole lot of negative charge on this molecule. We have repulsion already because these two negative things don't want to come together. So at the pH of the blood, it's quite difficult for a negative to react with the negative carboxylate. But here in this thioester, we don't have this buildup of negative charge. And we have sulfur, a good leaving group. So if we treat our coenzyme A ester with a nucleophile, we'll get displacement of the S-CoA group. There are three hydrogen atoms here adjacent to this carbonyl. Because of the dipole here and the resonance of the carbonyl, these hydrogen atoms are somewhat acidic. So if we treat this with a base, which I'm representing with a negative charge here to show some electrons that can attack, we can get deprotonation of one of these hydrogen atoms forming an enolate. The enolate can be drawn like this, or we can show its resonance form with the negative charge on oxygen. As you might imagine, this reaction to be deprotonated is also difficult for the ionized carboxylate. We're trying to put an anion on carbon when this molecule already has a lot of negative charge. So the thioester allows nucleophilic attack at the carbonyl and makes enolization occur more readily. Now let's look at two examples of coenzyme A esters in biochemistry so we can see these processes illustrated, so enolization and nucleophilic attack. In the TCA cycle, acetyl coenzyme A, which I'm showing with one of these acidic protons drawn out, is going to bind to an enzyme. I'm representing the binding pocket of this enzyme, citrate synthase, as this pink line here. The enzyme also binds oxaloacetate. The side chains of amino acids in the active site are going to deprotonate here, enolizing this part of the molecule. This is going to attack this carbonyl. So I'm going to set up my active site with a few generic amino acid side chains in it. Here we have a proton acceptor 
And here we have a proton donor, which the enzyme strategically places near the two substrates. This basic residue is going to remove this proton. The electrons that would be left behind to form the enolate can attack now. So I'm showing this deprotonation and I'm simultaneously going to show the enolate attacking the carbonyl. The double bond to the oxygen will open up, accepting a proton from this proton donor. This will give us an intermediate. Now, citrate. The final product of this reaction actually has an OH group here. So we can show this as an enzyme promoted process where a molecule of water binds and an enzyme residue that's acting as a proton acceptor can deprotonate one of the hydrogen atoms on this water molecule, allowing these electrons to attack, displacing S-CoA, and I'm going to add in a proton donor amino acid side chain so that coenzyme A can leave in its protonated form. Hydrolysis gives us our molecule of citrate, which can be released from the enzyme. This carboxylate here corresponds to this S-CoA ester that we hydrolyzed in the previous step. Coenzyme A esters are super important in fatty acid biosynthesis as well. In fatty acid synthesis, acetyl coenzyme A and this molecule, malonyl coenzyme A, will be transferred to the acyl carrier protein. So here, the coenzyme A esters are allowing for a reaction called transesterification, and we're swapping for another sulfur group at this carbonyl when we attach it to the enzyme. The interesting thing about this is the enzyme-bound sulfur donor is super similar to coenzyme A itself. This sulfur-containing group is a phosphopanthethene. So our phosphopanthethene unit extends all the way over to this phosphate group, so incredibly similar to coenzyme A itself. Now the enzyme-bound malonyl coenzyme A undergoes a decarboxylation, which is going to form an enolate here. Now, I could show my electrons coming up and making an anion on this carbon, but I'm going to use an even more abbreviated shorthand. So we're breaking this bond. This is going to come off as CO2. These electrons that are left behind are going to attack at our enzyme-bound acetyl coenzyme A piece. Of course, this will form a tetrahedral intermediate that will push the electrons back down and kick off the protein but we can just show one arrow abbreviating that whole process. Let's draw what we get. So the piece that originated from acetyl coenzyme A has gotten kicked off of the protein and is now bound to the malonyl coenzyme A piece that remains enzyme bound. This is the first part of a multi-step process. We're going to eventually lose this carbonyl and extend the chain again and again until a fatty acid of the proper length for that enzyme is produced. To sum up, coenzyme A esters are very important in biochemistry because they undergo reactions that are quite difficult for carboxylates in the body at blood pH of 7.4. These reactions are nucleophilic attack and enolization of these alpha hydrogens. Both the TCA cycle and fatty acid biosynthesis provide examples where we see the enolization of coenzyme A esters and also we see how easily they can undergo nucleophilic attack and displacement.